using the TI Inspire CAS handheld. Video 2 Sketching Graphs with CAS. Part 3 Finding Key Points Using Graph Trace. So, in the previous video, we looked at using Analyze Graph to identify key points on a graph. In this video, we're going to look instead at using Graph Trace. Um, so I've drawn a fairly simple parabola here, y equals x squared minus x minus 6, and I'm now going to press menu, 5 for trace, and 1 for graph trace. Now the default um, with graph trace is that it will place the cursor on the y-intercept of the graph. So here we can see it's telling me this point is a y-intercept, it's giving me the coordinates of that point, um, and they are 0, negative 6. So in trace mode, I'm essentially just going to be able to walk along the line of the graph that I have drawn here and it will give me coordinates in the bottom right hand corner there. So I, you can do this using the touchpad by swiping your finger. Um, it's really inaccurate and quite difficult to control so I tend to actually use the arrows to actually press on the left or the right side of the touchpad to move left or right. So we can scroll along this graph and you'll see that it moves uh, in an X direction in increments of 0.3. Um, you can change that setting, but it's not really necessary um, to do so. It will always find key points along the way, so even though this isn't at an increment of um, 0.3, uh, it identifies for me, here's a key point, this is a zero of the function, and I can see the coordinates in the bottom right hand corner. You'll note that in trace mode, um, compared to analyze graph mode, we're not actually getting a point placed on the graph with a fixed coordinate that we can see again later on. It's a temporary sort of um, appearance of that point. So you need to scroll around and note those points. But it is efficient if um, you're just trying to find those points in order to draw your graph on paper. Um, although it does require sort of a bit of touchpad use and if your touchpad's a bit fiddly, um, as some seem to get when, as they get a bit older, um, you might find analyzed graph a bit more accurate. But that's up to you. So we'll jump to those key points, the zeros, the y-intercept, the minimum point, um, zeros again. Another advantage of being in trace mode is that when you're in this mode, so you've got this cursor on the graph, you can jump to any point on the graph simply by typing its x coordinate. So if, for example, I want to have a look at when x equals 1, I just type 1, x equals 1 appears, I press enter, it will jump me to that point on the graph. Um, so that's quite nice and sometimes quite a convenient um, way to quickly identify a few key points. I just want to have a look at a different type of function. So I'm going to delete all this, so pressing delete three times, yes. Tab to open the entry line again. I'm going to enter in a um, hyperbola. So I'm going to use control divide to bring up the fraction template. I'm going to look at 1 over x minus 3. So this is a hyperbola. It has asymptotes, a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Um, and you'll notice that the CAS doesn't draw asymptotes in as you would by hand. Um, so you really do need to understand about the functions that you're drawing and know that there should be an asymptote at this point etc. So I know a bit about these kinds of functions and I know that there should be a vertical asymptote where x equals 3. In trace mode I can confirm that fairly easily if I'm not really confident in my decision. So if I go to menu 5 for trace, 1 for graph trace, again it will jump to the y-intercept as the default start position. Um, and again, you can see um, your CAS, your um, calculator, sorry, your graphing screen only works in decimals. So, you know, you need to recognise that actually that y intercept is at negative a third. Um, there are also other ways to deal with that, and we'll have a, a little look at those um, in a later video. So, I've jumped to the y intercept. I can scroll around as usual and move around this graph. But what I really want to know is, is there an asymptote when x equals 3? So in trace mode, I know I can jump to the point where x equals 3 simply by typing 3. So I'm going to type 3, I'm going to press enter to jump to that point, and it will tell me there isn't a point. This graph is undefined when x equals 3, and it actually sort of draws in this pseudo little asymptote there for me. So that's a nice confirmation for me that there is indeed an asymptote at x equals 3. There isn't an equivalent um, method for finding um, horizontal asymptotes, although you know you could draw in the line y equals 0, um, and perhaps try to find points of intersection or scroll further along and zoom in um, to check whether or not you think it's an asymptote. It's not a definitive way to decide whether or not something is an asymptote though and you really should algebraically be able to do that. That's just a little thing worth looking at. 
Uh, let's just have a quick look at one more function. So delete three times again. Tab to open my entry line. Again, I want to draw, um, want to enter a fraction. So control divide, one over x squared, and minus four. So again, it's this time we have a truncus. This also has two asymptotes, a vertical one and a horizontal one. Again, it requires my understanding of the function to identify where those asymptotes are. But one of the things I wanted to show you here is when you're looking at this function, if you now go with menu, trace, graph trace, because the default for your CAS is to try to go to the y-intercept straight away, that's going to be a problem in a function where there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Um, so you'll see here it's telling me that at x equals zero this function's undefined, so it's not, we haven't actually got the cursor on the graph at all. What I'd be careful about here is if I scroll left or right from this point, it's going to jump me onto the graph at a point really close to where x equals zero, and that's going to be way, way, way up high. So it's also going to shift my window and change what I'm seeing. I won't be able to see the truncus shape anymore. I'll have a look. I'll show you what it does in a minute. Um, so a better way to avoid that would be to know that that's going to happen and think, oh, okay, I don't really want it to play with my window, although we'll look at how to fix the window in the next video. Um, I'm going to jump to a point that I know is on the screen. So when x equals one, for example, all right, now I've got my cursor on the graph, now I can play around. Same thing if I wanted to go across to the other branch, I'd probably just look at when x is negative one, move it over there and have a look around at what's happening over here. Um, would be the most efficient way to do that. I'll go back to the um, undefined point where x equals zero, so somewhere on the asymptote. And if I scroll left or right from here, you'll see what I mean. Oh, this wasn't too bad. Sometimes it will jump you quite high up um, the graph, um, so so much so that you won't even really be able to see um, your axes anymore, certainly your horizontal axis. So just something to be wary of, although we'll look at how to adjust the window and how to play with that in the next video. So stay tuned for that one.